Thank you for watching videos by FamilyTravelPhotos.com. In this episode, I will continue a series of videos that prepares you to fly the unique Q500 as I take a closer look at Smart versus Angle mode, what they are, and how beginners and advanced pilots alike can use each mode. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you fly safely and successfully with your Q500 quadcopter. This episode applies to all versions of the unique Q500 drone. Up to now, the goal of my videos has been to get you flying safely. Starting with this episode and moving forward, we're going to devote some of our time to learning how to use the Q500 as an aerial video platform, which is what it was designed to do. In Episode 3, I introduced you to Smart Mode and Angle Mode as part of the walkthrough of your first flight with a unique Q500. Today I'm going to discuss the differences between the two modes and show how you can use each one to shoot different types of scenes. While many experienced pilots ignore Smart Mode as quote-unquote beginner's mode, there are some situations where Smart Mode is the smart choice for advanced video shots. Let's get started with Episode 7, Smart vs. Angle, A Closer Look. Most pilots do all their Q500 flying in Smart or Angle mode. The primary difference between the two modes is the focal point from which the aircraft interprets your stick commands. This difference is referred to as flight orientation. In Smart mode, flight orientation is based on where the transmitter is pointing when you first take off. So, with the transmitter pointed in front of me at the aircraft, if I push the right stick up, the aircraft will fly forward and away from the transmitter. It doesn't matter which way the nose of the drone is pointing. Forward is always forward from the perspective of your transmitter. And back is back. Left and right are left and right based on which way your transmitter is pointing. Another way to say this is that the direction your aircraft flies is independent of where your camera is pointed. That's an important distinction I'll discuss later on. If you switch to angle mode, you change the basis for the flight orientation. Now the aircraft follows stick commands from the perspective of the nose of the aircraft. If the aircraft is pointing right, pushing the right stick forward will send the aircraft to its forward or your right. It's like you're actually sitting in the cockpit of the quadcopter. New flyers typically believe smart mode is a simpler, more intuitive orientation. When your Q500 is close to you, this makes sense. Theoretically, if you want the quad to go to the right, you move the stick to the right, and who cares which way the quad is pointing. That said, Smart Mode can be confusing to work with. Here's one example. Let's say my Q500 is hovering in front of me in Smart Mode. I want to fly to my right. I push the right stick to the right and off it goes. Naturally, I turn my body to the right to follow its motion. Now my original concept of forward has changed, hasn't it? Now my transmitter is pointed to the right of where it was pointed before. So what happens if I push the right stick forward? Nothing has changed for the Q500. It still goes the old way forward, which no longer matches the direction the transmitter is facing. Beginners tend to stand in one place and fly the quad in front of them, which makes smart mode very simple. Over time, as you start flying three-dimensionally and moving around as you fly, you may find this lock on the original direction of orientation to be confusing. And it gets worse. If you're in smart mode, you also have follow me engaged. So if you're walking as you're moving the sticks, the aircraft is responding to your motion as well as your commands. In angle mode, it doesn't matter which way the transmitter is pointed. Forward is the way the aircraft's nose is pointed, no matter what way the transmitter is aimed. But you fly in angle mode based on the direction of the aircraft, so where your transmitter is pointed isn't something you even consider. You can see that smart mode starts out simple, but as you improve as a pilot, smart mode can become even more tricky than angle. Here's another advantage of angle over smart. Smart is great when you're close, but now let's fly downfield. Let's spin the aircraft around to point at an interesting subject. 
you want to move in closer to the subject on your side. Well, if you're watching the aircraft, you know to move your right stick to the left. But chances are, if you're framing up a shot, especially at a good distance, you're looking at your transmitter screen. Now smart mode becomes less intuitive. On your screen, your subject appears to be right in front of you. You want to move in, so you push the stick forward. Oops. That takes you to the side of your subject, not towards it. And your quad doesn't have to be far away. Here I'm hovering only 50 feet away. Now I want to fly closer to zoom in. Looking at my FPV, I'm inclined to fly forward, which actually takes the aircraft farther away. I'm in smart mode, so I have to pull the stick back to return towards me, no matter where the camera is pointing. In smart mode, your transmitter's first-person view does not provide you with information on which you can navigate. Let's replay this scenario in angle. You push the quad downrange by moving the right stick forward. You yaw the aircraft to the side to find your subject. Now looking at the screen, you can see your subject is right in front of you. So you push the stick forward and move in for a closer look. The further away your quad is, the more you rely on your transmitter screen for maneuvering your aircraft. At 1,000 feet, you can still see your Q500 but recognizing which way it's pointing isn't as easy. Is it at 270 degrees or maybe 310 degrees? At that distance, you rely heavily on the camera's view, which is first person view, to see exactly where you're pointed. And once you start doing that, smart mode becomes less intuitive and angle mode becomes more so. Angle mode provides the advantage of always looking forward from the nose of your quad. Because of this, you can always steer out of trouble simply by rotating the aircraft until you're pointed at a safe flight path, then flying forward. So why would anyone ever bother with smart mode? Well, this type of orientation has some advantages over angle as well. I've already mentioned the first advantage. For beginners, smart mode is usually easier to understand than angle. It provides an easy step for people to start with before they move up to angle. Another advantage of smart mode benefits beginner and experienced pilots alike. To explain this, we must understand that the Q500 flies differently when using both sticks in smart versus angle modes. Let's start with smart. Remember, the direction your nose is pointed has no effect on what direction the aircraft flies. Watch what happens when I yaw the aircraft with the left stick and use the right stick to go forward. The aircraft flies on a straight line, spinning like a top as it goes. Let's switch to angle and do the same thing. Now the flight path is entirely controlled by the direction my nose is pointed. When I yaw with the left stick, the nose is constantly changing. So. When I yaw the aircraft with the left stick and then go forward with the right, that constantly changing direction causes the aircraft to fly in a circle. As you can see, I use the same stick movements with each mode and accomplish completely different results. And this all goes back to a point I made earlier. Thinking as a photographer rather than a pilot, in smart mode, the direction of flight is independent of where the camera is pointing. In angle mode on a Q500, changing the direction your camera is pointed changes the direction of your flight. Photographically speaking, camera direction is not independent of your flight path. This means that as a photographer, you can use the unique characteristics of each mode and enjoy different capabilities to expand the creativity of your shooting. In angle mode, you can use its flight characteristics to fly orbits around subjects. 
Other platforms like the DJI Phantom and the 3D Robotics Solo have this as an automatic feature, but for now at least, the Q500 doesn't. Orbiting in angle mode is a more advanced maneuver and takes practice, but it would be virtually impossible to do this in smart mode. Now let's look at a shot that smart mode allows you to do. Look at this setting. My subject is that concrete pump on my right. I want to do a flyby. I'll fly a straight line forward, but as I go, I want to spin the aircraft so it keeps my focal point on that concrete pump. That means that I will spin the aircraft as it flies down a straight line. Smart mode is perfect for this shot. You push the aircraft forward on its straight line. As you go, you slowly rotate the aircraft with the left stick, watching the scene on your transmitter screen. With smart mode and a little practice, you can create highly advanced creative shots. If I try this in angle mode, what would happen? As I spin the aircraft, the nose turns inward. That means the direction of flight will turn inward as well, and I won't be flying a straight line anymore. I'll curve in towards the subject. Here's what that looks like in practice. Here's an example of how the angle mode can be used in this type of shot. I'm flying sideways in angle mode, pushing my right stick to the right. When I reach the end of my subject, I continue pushing the right stick to the right, but slowly turn the left stick to the left. The quad wraps around the end of the subject to create a nice finish to the shot. So you think you can see the difference? Time for a test. What mode was I using when I shot this clip? If you guessed angle, you guessed right. Here's a rotating flyby of the same building in smart mode. This is just one of the countless number of ways that you can use the flight characteristics of smart and angle modes to create different shots. Here's another example. In smart mode, the aircraft is faced forward. It slides down and back as it rotates 180 degrees to a selfie of you. As you can see here, you can do the same shot in reverse. In smart mode, this is easy. In angle, it would be very difficult. One more important point. You don't have to pick one mode or the other. You can change from smart to angle and back again during your flight as often as you'd like. Don't be afraid to use each mode in different situations, even in the same flight. Here's the bottom line. Are you a pilot who shoots video or a videographer who flies? What exactly are you trying to accomplish? As a videographer, you fly with the goal of producing creative shots. Flying is the means, not the end. When you make videography your priority, you will see value in both smart and angle modes in creating imagery that is exciting, compelling, and creative. Experienced flyers don't like smart mode because they learned the old-fashioned way, angle mode, and it's confusing. They believe smart mode is a crutch for new flyers who never learn angle mode and will be in trouble if they lose GPS signal and have to fly manually. But smart mode does have a place with the Q500 videographer. It's a helpful beginner step for people new to flying, and it provides a simple solution for newcomers when they lose video sync. But smart mode is a legitimate tool for even the most advanced flyers. If you're serious about your videography, you'll find that Smart Mode is a valuable tool that expands the exciting images you can create. This concludes Episode 7 of my video for the unique Q500 owners. I hope you found this video to be helpful. 
I've posted other videos that are linked below. Be sure to click those links to learn more about flying your drone. It's easy for you to support my channel by hitting the like button below. It's free and it improves my videos rankings. It also helps my rankings if you subscribe. And if you do so, you'll be notified when I release more videos in the future. Got any questions or ideas for future videos? Your feedback in the comment section below is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.